My darling Morris, just a note which I feel I must write, or should I say, type to you. I was very, very disappointed to find out that you weren't coming to the club tonight. As ever since I phoned you on Monday and made arrangements, I just lived for tonight. When I was to have seen you, darling. As a matter of fact, I stayed in bed all day yesterday. Didn't even get up to eat and just thought of you. And counting the hours until I should see you. In our collections is this amazing letter, which is a really rare example of a relationship between two men in the 1930s. The letter is from Cyril to his darling Morris, um, and it really shows kind of an open expression of sexuality uh, and his feelings for his lover at the time. He essentially describes himself in the 1930s as queer. Um, so that's the kind of language that I'll use to describe him. So essentially he's uh, 22 at this point uh, and he's come to London and seemingly is kind of trying to explore his sense of self and identity. I only wish that I was going away with you, just you and I, to eat, sleep and make love together. This is a really uh, rare example of an open expression of queer identity in this period because essentially it was criminalised for men to have sexual relations with other men. Essentially, uh, gay relationships were pushed underground, they had to be kind of hidden. Um, so what that meant for many people was having to really risk a lot to, to be their kind of full selves. I love you, darling Morris. Honestly, I do. It's two years almost since we first met. Then I was crazy about you, but you just seemed to disappear. I never saw you for months and I tried to forget. And now since seeing you, it's all started again. And I just had to let you know how I felt. I think it's fascinating that despite the targeting and surveillance of the queer community at the time, um, there's this really thriving underground queer culture. Um, and it's kind of like a, a club scene really. Um, so particularly around central London and Soho, there were increasingly in the kind of 20s and 30s, these spaces that provide for gay men at the time. So there's some really interesting um, kind of clubs that pop up throughout this era. The Caravan Club is this kind of incredible venue. Um, it was described on the ticket as unconventional, the greatest bohemian rendezvous is what it's, it's kind of sold as and promoted as. Um, and essentially in using these kind of coded words, they were able to appeal to a kind of a queer clientele at the time. And within this venue, it was a, a relatively safe space for people to be themselves, uh, to dance with members of the same sex, have relationships, all those kind of things that were much harder um, outside of a space like the Caravan Club. On the flip side of that, they were also very risky um, and they were uh, under police surveillance often. The Caravan Club was uh, eventually raided in August 1934. There'd been a series of public complaints that had uh, drawn police attention to the venue. There'd been undercover surveillance um, and then finally this, this kind of raid on the venue. So 103 people were arrested, including the proprietors of the venue. They were they were taken to the local police station. Uh, on the way, Cyril, uh, kind of ever a character in defiant, uh, says to police officers, well, I don't mind this beastly raid, but I would like to know if you can let me have one of your nice boys to come home with. I am really good. We do know that the majority of people in the venue uh, were found not guilty um, of a aiding and abetting. Uh, the venue, but the two proprietors were sentenced to hard labour. The extraordinary thing about the raid on this venue, the Caravan Club, is that it actually allows us to have this amazing unique letter uh, that survives from the raid. So the letter was actually found with Cyril um, during the raid. It was torn up originally and kind of he, he tried to hide it under his seat in the Caravan Club. Um, the police then found it, they typed it up, um, as evidence, and that's the copy that now survives in our collections. So there's this ultimate contradiction that it's because of the policing that we have this amazing insight into queer love in the 1930s. Please don't think I'm foolish, Morris, but I love you such a lot. So please, if you don't feel this way to me, promise that we shall always be the best of friends. We don't know much more, unfortunately, about Cyril. Uh, he's one of those kind of figures from history that uh, is incredible in this moment, but he's kind of an everyman, I think. I hope, knowing Cyril, that he continued to kind of defy the law to live and love uh, who he wanted. It would take until 1967, uh, so 33 years later, for the law to change to allow homosexual acts in private. 
So hopefully they're all live to see that outcome. Well, Morris, darling, until we meet, I'm yours. With all my love forever and always.